This is part two of my exploration of event handlers. I, of course, assume that you've done the previous video. So what we're going to do now is actually, I just want to demonstrate something. You notice how I was able to use this JavaScript here inside the event handler. Now watch what happens so that you understand. I'm just going to copy this JavaScript. I'm just going to put it out here in the middle of the page willy nilly so that it just seems uh, so you see what's happening. Okay, Firefox wants to update. I'm going to say, don't bother me. I'm teaching, I'm teaching the people here. I'm just going to hit refresh. You notice now our first script work, I do it a mouse over, but you notice our, see the code here? Watch this. See the code? Now, the reason this code is showing up here, just being printed in a page as normal text, Whereas over here, it's actually being fired off as JavaScript. Well, first of all, well, let's look at the source code. You know, it's P on mouse over. It's going to be in the source code. Huge page source. Right? You see it? Right, you got it in the source code. Hey, these, these, on, these, these mouse overs are really getting on my nerves. Let me just change that to uh, unclick so it doesn't keep doing. Now, you notice I was able to do unclick with a lowercase c and it worked, and a capital C and also. There we go. Thank you. See, capital C worked fine too. In JavaScript, uh, they there's a convention where they like to name function names and event handlers and so on with uh, this camel case method here. This is called camel case because it's in between each word, the next word has a, a capital. On click, that's camel case, like a hump, right? This is no ca no hump here. Capital C makes it look like a hump. On click. I mention this because later on when we're getting deeper into JavaScript, it, in certain parts of JavaScript, it's case sensitive. It may not respond to this where it's actually looking for this, if that makes any sense. Anyway, just understand this is camel case. Understand how this has to be, you know, for this to run, it has to be within script tag. So just to, to be totally clear, script, I go language, let's say JavaScript, and I close it off. You see how uh, Dreamweaver makes it easy for us. Now watch what happens. You're going to see how the on, the, this alert, uh, I'm just going to go, automatic this alert gets fired off no matter what because it's not in any event handler it's not in a function we looked at functions briefly this just gets auto fired so let's just load this up refresh Whew. see automatic alert whereas this other event the don't click on me one where I have to click I'm gonna click now I'm clicking see out you click me so you see how event handlers in a way, it allows you to control when a particular piece of JavaScript actually happens. Does that make sense? One global concept you want to take away from our study of event handlers is that essentially they are a mechanism that's built into JavaScript where you can have the web browser scan for events. So you can say here, let's now scan for any clicks. Or remember when we did mouse over? Let's now scan for any time the mouse actually passes over this paragraph. So this is like a, um, a built-in mechanism in JavaScript, sort of a, a free tool that you have access to. And I, I say free tool because in other languages, you would have to manually build in your own event handlers and it's pretty tedious. So JavaScript does this for free for us. So it's kind of cool. And we have access to a whole bunch of event handlers. We saw the list before. So this is just a short list of some of them. Well, I think this is all of them. And so, well, no, it's not all of them. This is all of them that could be applied to the paragraph, right? Dreamweaver is just making this easy for us. Let me just point out that 
you don't need Dreamweaver to do this. You don't. You could just write this all out manually. So if you're using a text editor like Notepad or something, don't worry. Just type it out, and everything's cool. By the way, if you're watching this, I would pause the video now and type out this line of code that you see here and test it out, play with it. Once you get it working, break it. See what happens when it breaks. And um, this will go a long way to helping you learn how to code. Let me just nail that. I want to look at the body tag and look at event handlers on the body tag. So I'll go on. So you notice our event handler list is different on blur, error, focus, on load, on load is on page load, on resize, when the page resizes, on unload, etc. So you see that the list of event handlers really depends on the particular element that you're applying the event handler to. That all said, on the body, typically you're going to use the onload. When you're programming, you have to understand the whole process is bug prone, bug filled. Even when you really know what you're doing, you're always going to be coming across situations where it doesn't work the first five times. And you got to figure out why. And this is normal, it's par for the course. People with 20 years experience still run into problems. I've been programming for many, many, many years now. And, you know, what can you do? 